As an IFR pilot, you'll find instrument departure procedures can be very helpful. The purpose of departure procedures is to provide a standardized way to depart the airport and keep you safely away from obstructions beginning just above the runway environment up to the en route structure, which is a great way to start off your IFR flight. Now there are two routine types of departure procedures, also called DPs. Obstacle departure procedures, called ODPs, and standard instrument departures, called SIDs, SIDs. When you see this symbol on approach charts, a white T in an, surrounded by an upside down black triangle, it could mean that takeoff minimums are non-standard, but it could also mean that there may be specific departure procedures published for that airport. You can find these obstacle departure procedures in the U.S. Terminal Procedure Publication, but which can be found on the FAA.gov website. And you can also find them in applications like ForeFlight and Garmin Pilot and others. Now, DPs come in two printed forms, textual and graphic. You'll find these in the Terminal Procedures Publication. Textual ODPs, Obstacle Departure Procedures, are found in the Takeoff Minimums, Obstacle Departure Procedures, and Diverse Vector section. And Graphical ODPs and SIDs are found just after the approach procedures for that airport. These types of instrument DPs provide you with obstruction clearance from the airport to the en route structure on the condition that in, unless specifically noted otherwise, the aircraft crosses above the departure end of the runway at a minimum of 35 feet, climbs to at least 400 feet above the runway elevation before turning, and the aircraft can climb at least 200 feet per nautical mile. At 90 knots ground speed, 200 feet per nautical mile is about 300 feet per minute. Now, ODPs provide obstacle clearance on the least restrictive route possible. Also, ODPs can be provided in either textual or graphical form, or both. Now, ATC might not assign you an ODP, but you are allowed to fly an ODP even if ATC does not assign it. In fact, if you cannot see the terrain and obstacles, the FAA highly recommends that you do fly the ODP because obstacle clearance is not provided by ATC until they provide navigational guidance in the form of radar vectors. So unless ATC assigns you a different departure procedure or provides radar vectors, you should be flying the ODP if there is one. So let's look at the textual ODP for Sheridan, Wyoming's County Airport, Runway 6. And here you'll find the description of the procedure. You look up the airport by city and state. And it says here that for Runway 6, you would start a climbing left turn to intercept the Sheridan, uh, Wyoming VORDME's 109 degree radial to go to the Sheridan Vortac and thence, meaning fly your ATC cleared routing. And remember, even though the ODP says a climbing left turn, you do not start that turn until you are at least 400 feet above the runway elevation. Now, if the ODP is complex, like this Montrose 2 departure, it may be printed graphically to make it easier to form a visual picture of the procedure. This is a lot easier to follow. And for graphical ODPs, the word obstacle in parentheses will be part of the procedure title as it is here. The other type of DP is the Standard Instrument Departure, or SID.
SIDS are always published in graphical form along with a textual description like the SID for Grand Junction. Like an ODP, the purpose of a SID is to provide obstacle clearance, but it also reduces the workload for us pilots and our friends at ATC. Imagine that you're operating out of a busy airport, particularly one with a lot of airline traffic. You can bet that the ground control and clearance delivery frequencies can get very congested. And we all want to avoid tying up the radio with a lengthy, complex ATC clearance and our readbacks. So let's look at some more at this Grand Junction SID. You can see here that it's titled Grand Junction 7 Departure. And you can see the graphical depiction of the route here in the plan view. And then the textual route and transition descriptions are down below. Unlike an ODP, an ATC clearance is required in order to fly a SID. SIDs are also a big benefit for you as a pilot because when you receive your IFR clearance, instead of having to copy a long clearance, now all you need to do is simply copy the coded title of the SID, the transition, and altitude limitations if ATC gives you any. So the start of your clearance might sound something like this. Falcon 10 Foxtrot cleared to Denver International Airport, Grand Junction 7 departure, squat transition. And you can see that copying and reading back a clearance with ground control or clearance delivery will be much easier and quicker with a SID. Take a look now at the Stack 4 departure out of Helena, Montana. And let's say the winds are favoring runway 9. If you look at this note, you can see that the climb requirement for runway 9 is 415 feet per nautical mile to 10,200 feet, which at 90 knots ground speed is more than 620 feet per minute. That could be a tall order for many general aviation airplanes in high mountainous terrain, especially if you run into downdrafts or have some sort of problem. So if you plan to accept a clearance that includes a SID, you'll need to make sure you can meet any required climb gradient. Now, if you cannot meet all of the requirements of the SID, or you don't have the charted procedure with you, you need to enter no SID in the remarks section of your flight plan. But let's say you're flying an airplane that can meet the requirements of the SID, and you do have the charted description of it. So you are able to fly it. Let's talk about how you do this. You can recognize the basic SID because it's shown by the heavy black arrows that come out from the airport. Notice in this case that one arrow goes out to the west and then comes back to east to the Helena Vortac, and another arrow goes out to the east and angles up a little bit to the north. Then they both join the 087 degree radial going out of the east, out to stack intersection. Those heavy black arrows represent the basic SID. And the basic SID ends at stack intersection because that's where the heavy black arrow ends. After stack intersection, there are various transition routes going to all kinds of different places, shown by these lighter black arrows. Now, pilots and controllers refer to SIDs not only by the name of the procedure, but also the transition. So if you wanted to file for the Bozeman transition, this would be filed on your flight plan as stack4.bzn. And your route would be a climbing left turn from runway 9 to intercept the 087 degree radial outbound from Helena Vortac 
to cross stack intersection at or above 10,200, thence via the transition. And the Bozeman transition goes on to say, fly the 15 DME arc to Kersey intersection, then outbound on the Helena 103 radial to Sweet intersection, then inbound on the 320 radial to the Bozeman VOR DME. As you can see, it's much easier to read back stack four departure Bozeman transition than to read back all that detailed information. Now, SIDs often contain altitude restrictions where you have to cross a fix at a certain altitude. Altitude restrictions will be shown in the graphic, like here it says at stack intersection, 10,200 feet with an underline, meaning cross stack at or above 10,200 feet. The altitude restriction will also be given in the textual route description. So down in the bottom part of that departure procedure, it says cross stack at or above 10,200 feet. Let's take a look at the Reno 9 departure and some very important communications information. Say you were cleared for takeoff on either 16 left or right. The route description says to climb on a heading of 164 degrees and then the Reno localizer south course, thence, and if you look down further, it says to expect radar vectors to your assigned route. Let's say your assigned route is Victor 6, which is just nearly over the top of the airport. But what if you lose communications with ATC just after takeoff? Well, in the information below, sure enough, you're told what to do in the event of lost communications. Here it says, if you're not in contact with departure control within one minute after takeoff, maintain your assigned heading until passing 10,000 feet, then turn left direct to the FMG Mustang Vortac, and then proceed on your assigned route. 